so the best way I can think of to, uh, you know, visualize our resilience is we can think of it like a reservoir, right? Like a water reservoir. You might have uh, a reservoir that is filled up by different forms or different streams or different, you know, different water sources. And that's very much like where we draw our resilience from. We can draw our resilience from our basic level of health and health related behaviors like, you know, how well we sleep, how, um, how well we regulate our emotions. Uh, so those are, you know, health related behaviors that we are kind of, uh, that gives us a baseline, if you will, right, to, to get our resilience. We also get our resilience from how we cope with things, how our values are, what our thinking about uh, a certain subject matter is, our coping patterns. Do we problem solve? Do we ruminate? So those are coping strategies. That's another stream that feeds into our, our resilience. And then finally, there's the, you know, the greater social structural context that we're all kind of situated within. Do we have universal health care? Do we have access to legal and social services? Do we feel like we belong in a community? So all of those are kind of like the different streams that flow into a water reservoir. So when we think of our resilience, we really think about it as a comprehensive, multidimensional thing that gets filled up by different aspects. So for example, if we are low on our you know, health behaviors, we're not sleeping as much, we can still cope and be resilient by relying on some of the other things like coping strategies or you know, by relying on our community to provide us support when we need it. So we kind of think of resilience as this makeup of all the different things that actually you know, contribute to our resilience. And on the other side, it gets drained by different things too. Mm -hmm. Right. So we can, you know, we can have situational demands that are kind of unexpected and, you know, quite drastic, like the current pandemic that certainly affects a lot of our resilience. We can have something that's a little bit more, you know, uh, related to how well we want to grow. Right. We can think about all the journeys, all the goals that we set ourselves. Sometimes they can affect our resilience. Mm -hmm. And finally, you know, sometimes if we, have a hard time even providing food and providing basic shelter for ourselves. That also affects our overall resilience too. Mm -hmm. So the same way that things fill it up, other things will kind of drain it. So the model is a very dynamic model and kind of understanding that. Uh, so the model is uh, it's the first time that we've adapted it to the scale that it has, but we've certainly used the model in previous research that has come before it. We have used the model and the evaluation measure to capture really important, comprehensive changes in resilience as a result of you know, engaging in community empowerment and resilience training. We've used the model to really inform how we understand mental health and well-being. Uh, but I would say that in the context of the current pandemic, this is the first time that the model to its scale has been adapted and has really highlighted the dynamic nature of the model. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the biggest thing to change about the model and how it's adapted with the pandemic is that a lot of times when, when we are not you know, at our wit's end, we think about our resilience as all the things that we can source. We want to build our capacity. And something like a pandemic that is so, that its effects are so, you know, felt, you know, in all aspects of our life, it really mm, shifts our pr perspectives on resilience rather than thinking about our capacity. Sometimes we feel like we've got nothing left, like our tank is kind of empty, our reservoir is empty. So, uh, we shifted the model instead of focusing on, you know, the sources of, of resilience. Uh, we want to really highlight that we all have resilience. And let's look at really where your resilience needs are not being met. And then we can, you know, build capacity that way. Well, first, i uh, like to acknowledge that our, our team effort in everything, right? So including the model adaptation, the, the live chat, certainly a, a group effort in, in getting that off the ground <laughs> and especially in such a short term, uh, time period. I would say that the in, in applying the model and how we understand resilience, the most important thing is understanding that everyone's needs might be different. 
Mm-hmm. So, in the, you know, in the role of a live chat, uh, we really want to emphasize the, the, the need to understand the user's needs, contextualize, work through the beginning of the conversation to prioritize where are the things that, you know, they might come in and need help with the most, whether that's providing some basic emotional support, providing some information that can inform their decisions or connecting them to the right type of services that they would like to access. Uh, So (laughs) where do I begin? Uh, I think we all have the idea of resilience, right? It's very it's very innate in all of us. We all experience things um, and we all, you know, overcome them because we're all here. So, um, so for my research, I've always been interested in stress and resilience, how we cope with different things and the resilience being, you know, the, the flip side of stress as I originally had conceptualized it. But uh, in my graduate school career, I encountered some, you know, challenges in the system, challenges in terms of, you know, navigating different resources, uh, getting different support for different things. And when you go through some something that is challenging, it kind of challenges how your perspective and how you think of things. So I had always thought, you know, resilience is something that is in yourself. Right. You, you know, you're either resilient or you're not. And you can either get through things or you're not. Uh, and it wasn't until I experienced some challenges in my graduate school, I realized, actually, if it wasn't really for the people around me, you know, connecting me with the right s- services, me feeling like I had a community that I belonged and that I had access to you know, important things that I needed. I If it weren't for all of that, there's no way I could you know, I could overcome or, or even just cope. So that really challenged my beliefs about resilience. And for my uh, doctoral comprehensive exam, we are asked to each come up with either, either a study idea that is kind of independent, uh, or and different than your your normal line of work, or, um, you know, propose a new model or theory. So I thought, you know what, let me go ahead and look into this resilience literature. Let me see what is out there. And I find that a lot of the literature supports my initial beliefs about resilience, right? It's mainly focusing on the person, like a psychological thing. So, you know, we, we think about things, how we react to things is very much rooted in ourselves. But we think about, you know, overcoming something like the current pandemic It takes so much more than our individual will will and our individual health, right? We, we need to be collective. We need to think about, um, you know, what other factors, what, what our communities are doing, how we're supporting each other to overcome the barriers. Mm-hmm. So I, re- I proposed that model, published it, and really was well received. So the work kind of carried on from there. <laughs> so when did you publish this uh, theory or your model, resilience model? I published it back in 2017, beginning of 2017. So it was quite new. Mm -hmm. Uh, And uh, originally, I thought I just wanted a publication, you know, for your graduate school career. (laughs) Um, But it was so well received that, uh, you know, we had researchers, international researchers prominent in the field, um, you know, messaging and asking, uh, how's that work coming along? I found the paper so helpful to to shift my idea about resilience, it actually is a system approach. You know, it's multidimensional. Mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. You know, it talks about the structural deter- determinants of well-being. It talks about things within yourself and things outside of yourself and how they interact. Uh, so really interested in this work and so many of those inquiries that I thought need to pursue this. <laughs> Uh, I, th- I think that the emotions that a, a pandemic can, can kind of trigger uh, vary quite frequently. You know, I, I go from states of, of panic and distress to states of incredible gratitude and, and feeling supported. Uh, and, and I, you know, I, I dare to say that everyone's emotions are kind of up and down like this, right? Yeah. So, um, so the pandemic at, at an emotional level, 
has really helped me see things and understand things and, you know, and surprisingly brought on some belts of gratitude that, that we have a community that we're building upon that we are supporting and this community supports us back, um, you know, and, and doing something like this to support the community is incredibly fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the, the model ha continues to advance <laughs> resilience. Uh, I think resilience is such a, a construct that everyone can identify with that uh, in some ways, you know, lots of expectations at an individual level about what that might look like. So a challenge is continuing to evolve it in a way that makes sense to uh, represent the everyday experience, but also captures it at a you know sophisticated level that stands up to you know scientific rigor and scrutiny mm -hmm. so so next steps for me is to continue to build that out and and find new avenues to apply that to certainly uh continuing the existing lines of research as well we have <laughs> a number of research studies that are ongoing and that didn't stop even in the in pandemic we just simply moved everything online on Zoom. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, and then a uh, long-term goal, yeah. continuing to do what I love, <laughs> continuing to do research, uh, knowledge translate, teach, work in the community. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jenny. Hope you Thank well. You. Thank Take you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.